Hi, welcome to the Pep Story Live. And tonight, carrying on with the theme on storytelling. And tonight, I want to look at how do we structure stories, particularly if you want a nice compelling story that's going to engage your audience. How do you structure that? So structuring stories, I think I've pretty made it clear in three or four uh, of my uh, little chats that story is really, really one of the most important elements of becoming a great speaker. Purpose, experience, passion, performance and story. And it's all about how do we perform those stories? How do we make those stories come alive? How do we engage the audience with that story? And your competition, there's a huge amount of competition when you're trying to do this because you're you're competing with the television. You're competing with uh, with people who are spending millions creating a story that engages and takes you into it. And the, the whole aim of a good movie is that it basically takes you on that journey with them. So what you've got to do is to try to do the same thing within a speech. What well, you know, whatever that speech is, you want people to come on the journey with you. Even if it's a, a documentary movie that you see on TV, we're getting the same thing out. We're getting that sense of coming along on a journey with the speaker. So let's just have a look at ask, asking one really important question now. Why are you going to tell a story? You, you've got your stories that you've been building up, your catalogue of personal stories, maybe a few stories from other people. We'll come back to those at the end. But why are you telling this story? What's the point of it? So underlying this, you've got this whole idea that there's one message or point per story. That's what we're trying to do. Your, your story is trying to get across a message. And I'll come back to what we do if your story has multiple messages or if you're going to use it to illustrate multiple messages, because it's important that it's yeah, a particular segment, a particular part of the story just tells the story and then gets across the one point. If you get multiple messages into a story, they'll miss the message. People won't get it. They won't understand it. It's got to be one message, one point per story. And that's really important. But there are some other elements of what we're trying to do with the story. So I'm trying to help the audience to remember the important message. That's that's one of my key elements I'm trying to do. I've got a message and I want you to remember it. So I've got to structure the story in such a way that you really get that the message that I want you to remember is the point of the story. Whatever else happened in the story, and I've got some stories that I tell in two or three different ways and with different points. But I have to make sure that when I tell it, I emphasize the point that I want to come across. Uh, and I'll, I'll illustrate that in, in a minute as to as to why that happens. So the other thing I'm trying to do is I want to help the audience to see the world through my eyes. And that's what you're trying to do. Take me on a journey so I can actually see the world as you see it. And that's a really essential part of the story. We know that when I tell a story, you feel the same emotions that I feel. And we've there's been you know, MRI tests done on this where they've got the storyteller telling a story and they've recorded exactly how their brain is functioning during the telling of the story. And then they've put students into the same MRI scanner, let them listen to the story being told, and their brain responds in exactly the same way. So we know it's it's emotions that are connected with stories. Okay, the whole idea of you know uh, ethos, pay, uh, ethos, logos, pathos. These are the the elements which Pi, um, Aristotle talked about. I'll come back to Aristotle in a minute. Uh, the yeah, ethos is about the credibility. Logos is about the facts, and pathos is about the emotion. And we know that the best speeches are around 65, 70% about pathos. It's about engaging emotions and taking people with us on the story. So that's the, the critical element. The Chip Brothers at uh, Stanford University done a huge amount. Make It Stick is the famous book that they've written. And much of Make It Stick is about creating a story that the customer becomes engaged in, making a story that the audience becomes engaged in. Then they remember it. And they remember it for a long time afterwards, whereas just facts and details 
they're gone in seconds. So, and so there's the third thing. We want to engage people emotionally. We want them to see the world through our eyes and we want them to feel and experience it as if they were there. Yeah, you know, the best thing is if I could take a tape and plug it into your brain and boom, there you go. You actually experience that whole story. So that's what we're trying to do. It's, it's all about engaging emotions and creating things. So if you've got more than one message, break the story up. Now, I have a story which I tell quite a lot. I, I was subjected to a, a quite substantial hate crime for a while. A bunch of kids, um, just you know, not long after I'd moved up to Hull, and I was in the process of coming out. So people knew that I'd lived as a man. They knew that I was now living as a woman. And, and unfortunately, when kids get to hear about that, it becomes a bit of a, a fun thing to go and throw eggs at the house, throw stones at the house, go and shout things across the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how many people actually experience that kind of hate crime, but I'll be honest, yeah, most people who are gay, known to be gay, people who are trans, people who are seriously disabled, people of different colours, people of different religions, people with disabilities, we all experience that, that kind of uncomfortable hate, which is why it's being dealt with so severely uh, by the courts now. So this experience had happened to me. It had been a quite long experience. It's a quite a big story. Lot, you know, I, it takes me about five, sometimes 10 minutes to actually tell the whole story. Uh, depends where I'm going to use it. I keep a short version for the end of uh, when I'm using it as a close to the end of a conference where the point is treat people with dignity and respect. Because what happened, and I'll just give you the punchline in it, after a week-long program of this of this hate crime I finally confronted the kids who were doing this, about 15, 20 of them, and they were throwing mud at my house this one night, and I went out there literally ready to hit them. Uh, and the point was that I didn't. Um, and had I done so, had I actually lashed out and hit them with a, you know, basically a washing line um, pole, um, I would have been in so much trouble. But I didn't. I engaged with them. We started talking. They started asking questions. I answered lots of their questions and everything stopped from that moment on as they stopped fighting because now they had engaged with me. And the point is that if I had actually gone out and attacked them, I would have been the one who was the was the enemy. I would have been. Yeah, I would have been arrested by the police. I would have been charged. I would, all sorts of things. I'd have probably had to move away. But by engaging with them and tackling them, despite the fact that that was really risky and dangerous, um, actually the problem was solved. I became the hero of my story. Um, and I am able to say there, you know, if you treat people with dignity and respect, which is what I did, even though I had intentions, otherwise I stopped and actually just answered their questions, had a conversation, treated them, you know, respected the fact that, okay, maybe they're dealing with difference because nobody had actually helped them understand it. So I did. And that meant that the problem went away. And that's the way that I use it as a, as a close. But I was asked to chair a conference that involved most of the people involved in dealing with antisocial behavior and hate crime and such like. So the police were there, the um, justice system services were there, the probation services were there, the um, oh, everybody was there, Every, everybody who's involved in engaging social services, social workers, the council were, were, were running the, the, the whole event, and lots and lots of different aspects of police and social justice and justice were there. Uh, and a lot of speakers, so I was introducing each of the speakers the chief of police, the chief of probation services, um, and the chief of the local council. Um, a hate crime unit, all of these people. So I realized that I could use my story bit by bit, and I broke it up into about four parts and used each part as an introduction to the next speaker. So when I introduced the chief of police, I talked about the problems and challenges I'd faced in trying to get the police to react because the 999 service said it's just children causing a nuisance. So that created a big story there about tackling um, those sorts of problems. So bit by bit throughout there, I was able to break the story down and use the different messages from that story in different ways to introduce each individual speaker. So do you see, you can be very playful and creative with a story. 
and use it in all manner of different ways. So there's the important thing. Break your story up for multiple messages. Make sure that your story is, is focused on the one message that you want to get across. And remember, we've talked very short stories or what we call anecdotes, personal stories. And, and there are lots and lots of those. I, the story I told you last night, I was talking about yeah, what really got me into my speaking. And I'll come back to that in a second. Um, the start of my speaking career started with getting involved in a drama course. But that year had all sorts of other things. So I, I, I talked about the Rag Week and, and getting the, uh, the you know, pop band, the move there and getting to meet the members of the band. That's an anecdote. That's, there, was no, there was no crisis, no conflict involved. In that Well, there had been because they didn't want us to do the Rag Week. But yeah, the, the, I can tell you a story about, yeah, I met the move. I, <clears throat> I went to Butlins as a red coat and had a good time. Those are all anecdotes. Now, within them, if I want to look a little bit further, there were some challenges. There were all sorts of issues um, that had yeah, that I had to deal with, uh, and yeah, I failed A levels again. So there, there, are, there are all sorts of different points that I can get. Now look at 1969; it's packed full of stories. Some of them had lots of conflict in. Fables and parables will that will come to they, those are, are stories with a moral, and you know we, we know that yeah, you know, religious teachings, the teachings of Jesus, the teachings, yeah, you know, all the all the things that you read from the parables and the and the Celtic fairy tales and Grimm's fairy tales, all of these stories have a moral, and you can take those stories or you can use stories, and yeah, you know, if you look around for some that people don't know very well, you can reconstruct them a little bit, re-engineer them, um, and. I'm a great fan of Philip Pullman, who wrote the Dark Materials um, series. And he's also rewritten and restructured and retold the Grimm's fairy tales in the way that he feels he would like to tell them. They're the same stories, but he's just put a slightly different slant on them. And and you'll notice that in the movies, they've been re-engineering Sleeping Beauty. They've re-engineered um, a whole range of different um fairy tales and created whole full length features out of them which have the same basic moral in it little red riding hood turns up but you know turns up as a horror story and so there are all sorts of ways that we can re-engineer stories that have been around for years and make them new make them fresh make them our own tell a story about our own experiences that went that have a moral code to it so if you've yeah, rescued somebody um, and helped them, and they were actually a bit of a rogue, but you set aside your fears and, and helped them. Well, that's the Good Samaritan story. Uh, and I'm sure every single one of us has had a Good Samaritan experience at some point in our lives that we could retell um, to give a, to, to tell the same moral point about the Good Samaritan. Now, stories in the sense of real stories have to have conflict. That's the real. That's the essence of them. There must be conflict in the story, or else it is not going to work. Somebody wants something, has difficulty getting it. That's the essence. And I think every single one of us, at some point, has had a situation where we have wanted to get something, we've wanted to achieve something, we've set ourselves a goal. And there has been a problem. There has been a, a barrier to overcome that we had to fight like mad. And, and maybe we've fallen a number of times and we've still not been able to get over it. But that's the key. Overcoming conflict. <clears throat> that's the resolution. So have a look at how you can then start. So let's have a look at how that might work uh, and the types of stories and the, t the way in which you can start to build stories. Because there are lots of different structures. I, I think actually there's seven uh, I've got a book called The Seven Basic Plots. Uh, it's been said that there hasn't been a new plot since Shakespeare. So if you know all of Shakespeare's stories, you know all the basic plots of stories. But actually, if you look back to the Greeks, you'll find they'd already got most of them as well, uh, if not all of them. And Shakespeare um, you know, used the same plots and stories in, in all of his things. Basic storytelling contains those plots. And we're just going to have a, a quick scan through those. Now, thing to think about is your signature story. Your signature story is why you do what you do. And if you're going to, yeah, if you're going to do speaking as more than just something you happen to have to make a speech, if you want to be a speaker, you need that story. 
I need to understand that story. And I think in anything that you do, when if you're going to get into work that means something, that really is meaningful and that and that you can push for and drive, then it has to be, there has to be a signature story. There is a reason why you do it. And check out Simon Sinek. Um, uh, of TED Talks, have a look at his book, you know, Getting to Why. Um, you need to think about what is your why? Why are you doing what you're doing? This is the whole Apple story. They, the reason Apple did it was for more than just, they didn't just do it to make a profit. They did it because they had a passion and a mission about creating um, a different kind of access to computers. Uh, which is why it's been so successful, which is why, and Apple has always done this. It, yeah, it's it's why it's, you know, one of the most successful companies in the world. But think about your your business, your story. What is your story? Why do you do what you do? I told you in my show last night a little bit about what got me into it. I just fell in love with acting, loved it. Um, didn't want to be an actor, didn't understand it, because that's basically doing the same thing over and over if you're on the theatre, you know, you think, you might do a year, two years just doing the same part every night over and over again, which for some people is great. Now, I have been doing the same talk. Um, I've got you know, four or five talks I do. But my main talk, one about uh, transgender awareness, rethinking sex and gender, I do that, you know, two, three times a month. And it's the same talk. I vary. Yeah, it's got about a 10, 15 percent variation, depending upon who my audience is. But a lot of the content has changed. Now, if I look back over 15 years, it's grown, it's changed, you know, because the law is changing and various things are changing. I have to keep blending in the new stuff and dropping out the old stuff to keep it to, uh, on, on tight. Um, but my story about LGBT history is largely the same stories I've been telling for nearly 20 years now. But they, they, they're history stories. They'd always be around, but they're stories a lot of people don't know. And those are other people's stories. Uh, and I'm looking at, you know, and we'll, again, I'll, I'll just talk about that in a second. But so this is the first thing we've got to think about. If you're going to be uh, getting your stories, get your story sorted out. It's a really important story to be able to tell. It's one you should practice and understand. Um, and out of it, there needs to be some conflict. Somewhere along the line, you have to have had to overcome some challenges and difficulties to get it because otherwise it, it won't engage. It won't grab people. It won't take them on the journey um, because the people who most need to hear your story are the people trying to climb the same mountains, trying to overcome the same obstacles, and they want to hear how you did it. Uh, I was at a, a session last night talking about a product called OBS, which I'm going to be looking at using. or the, It's a product to, make, to help with live streaming and uh, broadcasting and, re and recording. And it was fascinating because we were looking at how, you know, and we're all facing the problem. How do we make our shows more uh, attractive, more engaging? And this was really great because it showed us some really good tools uh, for doing that. So it was a technical d demonstration, but it was still a better story. And what I found was the whole way you build up um, using the software is about reflecting your story and you build you know the bits into your you build scenes to help you put together anyway that's it a piece of software turns out it's a storytelling software so let's have a look at this um i want to talk about the hero's journey it's the oldest story that we know about the oldest structure that we know about because it's the oldest piece of literature that is still written down that we can access um the uh, epic of gilgamesh is a hero story and in particular, just look at the hero story options. We've got the overcoming the monster, and that's the Gilgamesh story. Great monster is threatening the whole land, and you have to go out and, and kill the monster. It's the George and the Dragon story. <clears throat> it's the story of the Hobbit, isn't it? The <clears throat> quest, well, actually, there's a quest in there as well, but the quest ends up with a huge overcoming the monster because it's the, the dragon smell. Um, i forgotten the name of it. Um, but, yeah, it's the dragon that we're trying to fight at the end. Um, Lord of the Rings, a big, long quest with heroes, and they're fighting uh, the Lord of Mordor, uh, the dark monster that's threatening to overcome the whole land. James Bond, always oh, there's somebody about to take over the world or destroy the world, or and James Bond single-handedly gets in there and 
battles with the monster to stop it. It's the same story as Gilgamesh. It's also the rags to riches stories. These are hero's quest as well. The uh, and the guy who started out as the runner in a Hollywood studio and ends up running Hollywood. That that's the the, the huge story. I mean, I'm, from, I'm not quite sure exactly um, how rags to riches it is, but I know that uh, Elon Musk, now the richest man in the world at almost two hundred billion dollars. My God. Uh, and yeah, it was only twenty billion at the beginning of twenty twenty. So when everybody else was struggling, uh, he was actually transforming himself into the richest man in the world. And if you look at his story and go right back, you'll find there were times when he barely had enough money to eat. Um, yeah, th this is you know it's a rags to riches story. It's going to inspire people. Uh, and this stranger in a strange land is the. It's a book. I know that's a book title, but from a book in the 1960s by Robert Heinlein, one of my favorite books. Um, but it's also an interesting concept. It's the idea of going to a place where you know no one, no one you don't know the culture, uh, and you have to learn to survive in a, in a new and very complex culture, the samurai, things like that. So, and it may be that, yeah, as part of your life, you moved abroad and went to a country you didn't know where you built some success and became a successful entrepreneur, successful um, whatever uh, it is. So that's the, the hero's quest story, uh, journeys. Great stories to be able to tell, very inspirational, very motivational. Always, don't forget, every single one of these, the, there is challenges to overcome. Tony Robbins' story, ah, battling like mad, overcoming them and becoming a hugely successful Triumph stories, um, slightly different because these are triumph over. This is the if you can meet with triumph and disaster, if you, you know, triumphing over disaster, um, hitting a problem and then moving past it in order to become successful. And th this is the, 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 the health challenge ones. There are lots of speakers who, who deal with the fact they've overcome major challenges there. Uh, a, the trial test, climbing a mountain, um, yeah, a profound lesson. The, uh, meeting the guru who says something, boom, oh, my gosh, um, new enlightenment um, comes through. So these are the, the triumph stories where you've discovered something and moved through. Uh, you've got past a huge, terrifying problem of a of a health challenge, cancer, heart attack or whatever, uh, and found a way to, to survive. COVID stories, I'm sure there are going to be plenty of those um, coming along. And then we've got the uh, disaster stories. Now, the disaster stories, generally what we're talking about here, uh, are, are people um, facing huge um, problems in their lives. And this is the, yeah, the, the great fire um, that brought about a complete disaster. This is the, I mean, it's a set of epic movies. I'm sure you've seen them. Uh, the Poseidon Adventure, the ship that turns flips over. Uh, we're battling with a volcano. We're battling with um, you know, great typhoon and tornadoes uh, ripping apart the land. Th these are the disaster movies. Uh, and there's a few people battling against this gigantic uh, problem. Now, um, in the disaster movies, there are stories to talk about here. Generally, what we mean are stories which are affecting us. So it's the comedy of errors. I have a great story about the worst event I ever organized. Everything went wrong. Not not time to tell you now. It's a quite long <clears throat> story. But yeah, one of those things where, you know, the technical thing, problems went on on the stage, problems with other speakers, jackhammers on the roof, noises, you know, road uh, problems on the road so that people couldn't get the uh, everything. Yeah, every, everything that could go wrong went wrong. Um, so there's a there's a comedy errors type story where everything you know, just just literally went wrong. Self-deprecating humor, things that you've done that have absolutely fallen on your face. Now, the thing about disaster stories, um, they can be very moving. Um, I strongly recommend you don't start or finish with them because they they can often leave a an emotional state. Um, that isn't where you want to leave the audience. If you begin it, do it at the beginning, you have to way, find a way to be able to break people from that. Um, and that can, yeah, that needs some drama and a bit of skill. So if you tell it 
at the end you leave the audience sometimes oh god that's terrible um, and you don't want that you want people feeling up and you know inspired to get on and do something at the end of your speech so you know use them sometimes our personal stories contain a bit of this but just think about you know self-deprecating humor comedy of errors you know anecdotes that that help this sometimes they can be very very funny but just be ready don't tell these stories when you're still in the middle of it it is okay to tell a story about how you you know were made bankrupt and you pulled yourself together and you got the business back on its feet and whoa, off you went and you can go into the the catalog of what went wrong and the crash that left you uh, almost broken and then you can build back out of it but you don't want to end when you've just been broken so if you still haven't picked yourself up you're not ready to tell that story wait until you're ready to tell the story that's the important thing if you're not ready to tell the story if you haven't overcome the emotion if you haven't gone through it if it's a, you know health problems don't tell those stories until you've actually got to a point where you are okay telling the story it really is important okay so i'm going to um bring things to a close i think now because uh, we've done lots of things today um the uh it's been a, a pretty um a lot to sort of um get together um I'm going to be back tomorrow, day 17 of my 31-day challenge. So we're doing okay. I'm going to be getting more very quickly. I'm going to be talking a lot more about performance over the next few days. And then I'm scheduling up some guests. I've got a few guests from the Professional Speaking Association. I'm going to try and make the whole, at least the whole last week, maybe a bit more, um, a series of guests talking to guests who uh, about their speaking experiences and how they can, and getting tips from them about what we can do. Remember, if you've got any need for some coaching if you if you've got a ted talk coming up you've got a big event where you've got to speak and it doesn't have to be i mean i've been talking today about lots of stories around this stories can be about your company about your business about your products uh, and they work just as well you can also tell other people's stories i i when i do my history talks i draw on history and tell stories of things that happened in the past and i retell those tales in ways that actually are engaging and that's perfectly fine Lots of them are not known very well. As I've said before, avoid the cliches. Try not to tell the starfish, the, yeah, the starfish story or the, yeah, these are these are stories that have been you know told over and over again. Yeah, try and make you want originality. But a bit of speaker coaching. If you want some help, I'll give you a thirty-minute introductory session. Have a chat. Just drop me a line at ricky at rickyarundel.com, um, and uh, I'd be more than happy to see what I can do to help you to create a really compelling speech. And you'll be surprised. You can tell stories and make entertaining, even the delivering of an accountancy report. Uh, I got a five-minute ovation on why you should buy life insurance. So we can do anything. Join me tomorrow. Nice to see you tonight. And uh, hope you found that useful and interesting. Take care.